thank you for allowing us to be here, Professor Stephen, Dr. Mushir Rahman, uh, of course, uh, Professor Mustaq Khan, along with uh, my, of course, very dear friends, Tabit and Shamim Patwari, both of them are very dynamic in their own capacity, along with other participants. So it's a very interesting topic that we talk about. But of course, upgrading, when we talk about the upgrading, um, um, in terms of economic context, we must understand uh, that there needs to be a holistic approach on key policies, but also very segmented approach towards microeconomy. So that's one part of it. A lot of individuals have spoken about different um, ideas, different sectors, but I, I just want to take a note uh, on a different context itself. Of course, a lot of uh, policies, good policies are again there. Unfortunately, uh, these, some of these policies uh, do not see the light or they are too slow by the time they actually pick up, uh, the opportunities are lost. Uh, as such, I always say that whether our preparedness is there uh, to uh, have the benefit, the opportunity that may come for us. Of course, I belong to an um, area which is the first beneficiary of the Padma Bridge which is going to be inaugurated on the 25th of uh, June by the Honorable Prime Minister. Um, I always say to my constituents and others who are um, there engaged in, in their own capacity, whether we are ready to accept the opportunities that are coming forth. Unfortunately, we are not. Uh, we are more of a reactive nature than a proactive nature. And that is, I think, one of the, uh, the ways to actually simply um, express my view on uh, the economic cycle itself. In terms of uh, the indicators, a lot of focus has gone into uh, skill set mismatch, which do exist. A um, couple of years back, uh, I myself, uh, along with uh, one of the industry leader uh, in, uh, uh, who also used to be a president of MCCI, uh, Mr. Nasim Mazur, who also leads the Leather Exporters Association. Um, we were just having a discussion, we took up a couple of initiatives, uh, whether to see um, that whether we can have the skill set matching with the private sector as well as with the public sector. Unfortunately, the growth pattern that was expected of the leather industry has not been achieved because uh, purely because we lacked uh, the skill sets and the numbers of workers that were required. We just could not uh, ca ca get it into the uh, system. So that was one of the biggest uh, challenge. Then we, then again, another, I'm just giving a couple of examples of, from my end, that we initiated. Then we started off with the vocational education. Uh, we wanted to create with polytechnic institutions in Bangladesh, in 64 districts, uh, I think uh, there is 59 polytechnic institutes. We wanted to create, a, or we proposed creating an incubation center. And the focus of the incubation center was a public-private partnership. As in, the areas that had demands of certain trades or crafts, we wanted to integrate that into the polytechnic as an investment from the private sector so that those investments create jobs. And unfortunately, that also failed, unfortunately. So when I say my failures, of course, these, these um, very, very um, interesting ideas that we see, uh, a lot of projects that we see, we're talking about Digital Bangladesh, we're talking about Incubation Center through Sheikh Rasul Digital Lab, a lot of other good ideas, but unfortunately, unless you have the private sector engaged, as a collaboration, you will not be able to get the optimization because public sector fundings unfortunately do not have accountability. So that's from my point. Then of course we talk about, of course, it's very pleased to hear and very elaborated discussion by Professor Mustaq Khan uh, regarding financial mechanism. And again, Accountability, when we talk about accountability, we have to talk about standardization. We talk about, talk about quality rather than quantity. And that is where the mismatch still exists in the financial institution. 
although we are creating a lot of jobs, public sector or the private banks are are very open to um, promote the industries, but then again, it is not diversified. The former um, governor and of course the former finance minister, uh, late Abdul Mal Abdul Muid, he uh, promoted a circular through Bangladesh Bank asking all private banks to give 5% of their uh, uh, capital dispenses on green energy, but it hasn't taken any effect. It just has not been implemented, unfortunately. I have the paper on me, but then again, when I go into the banks, they are just not implementing it because they do not see a viability in terms of investment. Again, when we see about the viability capacity building from the uh, the likes of MCCI, FBCCI and other associations, they need to take a lead role in terms of creating a benchmark. I, uh, in, I am very much honored to be uh, part of the advisory board of e-commerce e association of Bangladesh. Again, about 700 e-commerce uh, companies. But again, then again, as of recent time, just we uh, created the, the policy for standardization. It's been four years in the running, and just recently this year, we have just set the standard and the policy on e-commerce. Again, it's a big business. It's a two billion US dollar business in the making. So e-commerce is flourishing. Just as of recent, they had their first election. So it was a very disciplined election and so forth. Again, standardization is must, and the associations and each of the industry leaders, they need to take a lead in terms of capacity building. <laughs> BGME has been brilliant in terms of uh, their standardization. Bangladesh is, uh, is very much has optimized its RMG sector. Although it's been mentioned by Mr. Abu Yusuf, four billion US dollar is, is been sent out of Bangladesh on higher level management capacity for the RMG sectors, mostly from India and Sri Lanka. So there again, are we able to create the jobs on the Top, top tire, unfortunately we have. Javed Akhtar is one of the few Bangladeshis who are leading the MNCs. Unfortunately, it wasn't the case even three years back. So that's where I think it needs to be, uh, we need to put our focus on. Uh, the Honorable Prime Minister has been very, very proactive in terms of promoting private sector. The 100 economic zone that we always talk about. Again, I would really uh, request Dr. Moshi Rahman, and others uh, who are there, along with, of course, we have to be accountable as well as policymakers. That's why these 100 economic zones hasn't just picked up. It hasn't. Only 30% of the 100 economic zones have gone into operations. And um, again, the lacking is there. I do understand because the Padda Bridge will give access to a greater segment of the uh, southern part of Bangladesh. My uh, eminent friend, Shamim Bhatwari, has talked about Rampur, of course, he belongs to that division. Uh, Rampur has seen growth since the 80s, early 80s. We from the south hasn't seen any growth for a long and the longest time. 50 year celebration has happened in Bangladesh. So bigger 21 districts in southern areas are and will be benefited by Potabish. But again, other whether we are prepared to actually take that benefit. So, um, of course, and one of the other sectors that I really want to highlight, and uh, Shamim Patwari and myself, we are both of us, is in the Climate Parliament, Bangladesh Forum, Chow Development uh, Board that we are promoting. Again, it's a very sectoral and need-based uh, analytical approach that we need to take. We cannot standardize everything in one platform. It has to be very need-based analytical approach for different, different uh, areas and sectoral approach. And uh, one of the sectors that I see that a lot of people do not focus is, is the informal sector of employment. The ILO do not consider informal uh, form of <laughs> employment at all. They do not take, it, take that into their uh, numbers. 48 million, 48 million of the Bangladeshis are involved in the informal sector of, of employment. What are we doing for them? Are we standardizing them? Are we, are we providing them facilities for uh, their growth pattern? We are not, unfortunately. And I think that's where I think we are lacking behind. Some of the few 
uh, issues that I have mentioned. Unfortunately, I don't want to um, elaborate any further because it's been almost two and a half hours or three years crossing. Um, uh, the Honorable Prime Minister's advisor is a National Skill Development Authority has been set, uh, set up for the last three years. Hasn't had effect as of yet. They haven't, they do not know what are their oversight, what are their focus areas. It's under the Prime Minister's office, the National Skill Development Authority. So the good practices have been adopted. Unfortunately, application is a lacking. And um, the, I think Chief uh, Economist of World Bank has mentioned, of course, we, we do not have time. Time is of essence. 2040 is the population dividend. We are expecting that it will uh, finish. Maybe 20, uh, 2050 could be the number. But then again, um, I think the Honorable Prime Minister uh, has focused on infrastructure because that is one of the primary uh, uh, requirement for any growth pattern. And now with the Padda Bridge, I think all of the countries is unilaterally being connected. I think now we need to focus on uh, quality and uh, implementation. I think that's where I think we all need to participate in our own capacity. Thank you so much.